So this is taken last year during spring, around this time where the cherry blossom is is blooming. And I saw it might be a nice way to kind of celebrate spring. So here we go. We're just gonna get started. There's several flowers and uh, I am not going to spend too much time on every single one of them. I will probably do a few ones that's a little bit more refined and some of the flowers I'll just let it loose. Okay, here's one. I'm gonna keep this painting, you know, pretty rough and I'm not going to do too much of it. Okay, so I'm just going to roughly blocking out a shape right now. And it's pretty rough if you look at the shape right now. It's very loosely. I'm just indicating all the shape, where the placement is, or the size is. Obviously, I change a few things here and there to work it better with the composition. I tilt the flower a little bit more. I make it a little bit bigger and I make this flower a little bit more extended to the right so it can expand just a little bit more. So hi Simple Shoe, good to see you again. Sorry I didn't say hi to you. All right so let's guess let's just starting to give it just a little bit more detail. So I pretty much just kind of block out the shape right now. And then I was starting to define the each of the petals, things like that. Okay. And now my iPad is giving up on me. I'm using a very, very old iPad, so any photo that's a little bit too big Sometimes it started to crash on me. Not really fun. Okay. Especially when I try to zoom in, so this might be a sign that I shouldn't zoom in too much. All right, okay, here we go. Back online here. So I have one petal here. Okay, here's the thing about this. I'm not a big flower painter. But I approach it just like any other paintings. So the petals, as long as you are able to draw a good shape, you are fine. You definitely don't have to make it one to one to the photo. Okay, you're not a photocopy machine, so don't even don't even try to do that. Just give it a good shape. You know, slow down a little bit, articulate your shape. A little bit and you should be good to go okay so the Sun is sink let me see sink the Sun judging by yeah the Sun is almost kind of top down so all this anther is casting shadow on the petals so here we go one here And this petal is overlapping this one, so this petal is in front. So this flower is definitely one of the main flower, and this flower is on the back. Let's draw that one as well. Okay. Now we're looking a little bit to the side of the flower, so the perspective changes a little bit. Okay, we see the flower petal at a different angle. We actually see the flower petal kind of curve up a little bit here. So you'll see a little bit more surface. Okay. How's the sound so far? Am I sounding all right? 
hope I am because if I am not then we have a serious problem okay there's another one here oh thank you thank you Jesse thank you simple shoe okay this one I will sketch it out a little bit looser. I'm not going to give it too much detail here. Okay. okay. Again, I'm not a floral painter. Um, there are some amazing flower painters that paints super detailed. And I just got a calendar from one of my students from Japan. Thing is Yoko Yaganama uh, Nagayama. She paints beautiful flower, but there are also a lot more detail. And I am not a very detail-oriented person, so I can paint flower, but you know, probably in my own way. But the key for me is to focusing on the good shape. Here is another one here that's kind of half bloom. I actually like it quite a bit. It's kind of like a ball, kind of like a sphere. So you get that initial sh sphere shape in and you start to s you know split the petal out like so. So look closely to the reference. Okay, the anther is poking out. Okay, the stern here. Wonderful, that's great to hear. Extremely clear on sound and video. That's so great. Okay, really happy to know that. Yeah, this morning is horrendous. Uh, it really bugs me so bugs me a whole day so that's why i want to do another one just to kind of redeem myself and to have something to save in my channel as well so background here's some leaves and stuff but i'm taking it with my my mirrorless camera so it has very strong bokeh so you can see that flowers in the back are all very blurred out, which is something that I am going to, to use. I'm going to utilize that and make some very soft shape in the background. Okay, so these are sort of the main flowers here and the flowers on the side, I will make them just a little bit loose but one thing I want to mention that just because you're painting loose doesn't mean you start to make things messy and not putting care to it okay that's a problem that I see from quite a bit of um, students and sometimes even artists they think painting a loose style means you are starting to go messy and just try to achieve everything by speed. That's not necessarily the case. Speed come from experience and speed come from how fast you think and solve problem. So painting a loose style doesn't mean you start to paint super fast. It simply means that you have a good understanding of visual language and you're able to describe a certain form with minimum amount of brushstroke and detail and without going super detail and going loose on that oh no problem uh, I will I will save this video if everything turns out all right I will definitely save this video for for future viewing so don't worry we will we'll 
I will be keeping this video. Okay. All right, looking good. Let me just take a photo for reference. Okay, let me actually hit the record for that. And uh, all right, let's start to paint. <coughs> Now, I actually might need to clean my palette a little bit. It's got a lot of dirty colors in it, which is fine if I'm painting a nice um, gray looking street scenery. But in this case, I'll try to make it a little bit cleaner. Since I am painting flower, I don't want to make it messy. So. wipe some of it off so I get a nice clean palette here I just need this two to be clean those are the most color I've been using so the first wash light and atmosphere it works um, I use that for a bigger size scenery but it should also work just the same with flower painting Okay, so light and atmosphere, not detail. I'm not going to do any shadow and anything. So just big light and atmosphere. So first wash, relax and mix enough, get enough water in your mixture. I have a cool pile here. It's a little bit turquoise, a little bit of cobalt blue. Get some nice cool color here on the other side. I have a warm pile, which will have cobalt turquoise as well. I'm adding a little bit of burnt umber to get that dull, warm green color. Adding a little bit of raw sienna as well. So I have my basic cool pile and warm pile. Okay. All right, so let's just start, okay? So just relax and just get that big wash in, okay? I paint around the flower very roughly. So you can kind of see that. Let me actually hide Let me actually hide the reference a little bit so you can not so nothing will block it okay so just some big wash I will spray the water I'll spray some water on it so it lives a little bit longer I'll take a slightly smaller brush I'm gonna grab a little bit of carmine here carmine is a beautiful beautiful pink tone color and I'm just gonna Get that in there. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. So a little bit of karma here. A little bit of that there. And uh, a little bit more blue here. While it is still wet, color will sort of blend into each other which is fine, which is something that I actually want. Okay, some more pink carmine color. Just let it go. Okay, I don't want this part to dry, so I'm just going to, just gonna wet the whole thing. Good morning. Okay, I paint at an angle, so they will have a 
bead gather here which in my opinion make painting a little bit easier okay and it's the first wash so we can kind of safely cover up the whole thing if you want certain part to be lighter just use you know just use clean water but we don't have to leave white okay don't stress yourself on trying to get white in okay. you definitely don't have to do that okay. you can leave a little bit of incidental highlight here and there but don't stress out yourself okay so let's get a little bit of green into it i'm gonna grab a little bit of color here it is a tree so let's get a little bit of green tone into the wash here okay so in some cases i might use masking fluid for the little anther but in this case i might just come back with gouache i think it'll be fine i don't want to stress myself painting a few flowers so enjoy the process of it okay some more carmine here a little bit of red actually makes things a little bit warmer a little bit of red here okay everything is still quite moist okay just so just with the tip of my brush i can get some of the tone in okay very soft color for the first wash okay you don't we're not painting detail painting light and color and that's it okay keeping keep things light light and wet and moist and keep your brush big don't use a brush that's too small okay okay a little bit of the carmine here just with the tip of my brush get some of the color in those wet on wet magic okay this one makes it beautiful okay let's show see it a little bit here okay, let me use a slightly smaller brush carmine is a very strong color so i constantly try to dilute it a little bit so it doesn't get overpowering okay so just with the tip of my brush very lightly just drop that pigment in here See that yeah that's what we want okay we don't want anything too defined right now just that transparent quality of watercolor okay very light and transparent that's a good first wash anything else that we need okay before the wash is dry we can play with it all we want you know it will hit a certain point that we need to stop okay, a little bit of darker color here okay so the stern i you know the branches and the stern i might I'll, I'll probably paint it a little bit later just so that it's not gonna blend with everything else. Okay. How's everybody doing? How do I sound? I mean the the microphone, like not my voice, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Hope everything is good. Okay. So I'm going to hide my face so it's not distracting and I'm going to move my reference to the right. Okay. 
There we go. Yeah, you don't need to see my... You don't need to see my stupid face all the time. Okay, I'm gonna blow this dry so I can continue to work on that. So, give me just a moment. I'll mute the mic. Okay, it's dry enough. I'm gonna start to work on the flower. So, perfect tonight. Good, great to know. I am so happy that it works. Okay, so let's work on our main flower here. So, I'm gonna take my number six Kolinsky brush and let's just get started on that. So, So it has a basic sort of a cherry blossom tone to it. So I'm just going to mix a little bit slightly darker color here. I'll grab a little bit of purple, see if it helps. A little bit of purple and I'll still use some carmine because that's the that's the main color here. Okay but cooler because we're going to paint some shadow shape right here so so be starting let's just start here okay okay and we have a little bit of turn here a little bit too a little bit too purple I'm gonna add some more red and carmine back there you go all right so the paper does buckle okay because i use quite a bit of water for the first wash now nice damp brush and we can soften some of this shape right here okay just soften it like that. Okay. And I think I'm just gonna soften this, just connect connect them together. Have you ever tried to paint with calligraphy brush? I think I did once, but I think it's a little bit too soft for my taste. But some artists use it and it works out great, so stick to whatever works for you okay don't you know don't use all the material i use just because i use them find the material that works for you okay so we got our self one petal here and there's another one so i'm just going to grab that color i'll make it a little bit bluer this time So dark, darker color, and I think because this is a cast shadow, the edge of the shadow is sharp, and the edge is following the form of the petal. Okay, that is very, very important thing to know. Okay, let me just add a little bit of carmine back here. There you go. Okay, so continue that shape down here. OK, 
okay a nice clean shape okay we're trying to paint some nice clean shape again this is cast shadow so we have ourselves some hard edges okay. okay in this petal oh, some, try to paint around the anther a little bit and a little bit of that A little bit of softening here. It's fine to leave a little bit of hard edge here and there, you know, for texture. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, this is a very important part. There's some cast shadow from the anther. So let's paint those out. See, that's one cast shadow here, another one there, following the form of the petal, okay? Those curves are quite important to help that optical illusion of people reading it as a form. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of laser and crimson so it's not too hot. Okay, drop that in while it is still wet. Okay, and uh, okay, I think we're at a good place for this one. Let's paint the center, which should be darker. I'm going to grab a little bit of neutral tint, actually. Okay, so it's nice and dark. Right inside of here, leave a little bit of the highlight to suggest there's anther popping out, like so. Okay, just a little bit of that. And I'll grab that nice red color I'm just gonna add just a little bit more water here okay keep it nice and loose gonna add a little bit of dark dark shadows here okay. we need to have this pops out a little bit so some really dark tone here so the petals will pop out Hi, Chrissy. Nice to see you. Okay. So I think this is kind of dried enough for me to add just a little bit more color to it. So this one, I'm gonna leave it be. So let's paint this one underneath here. So I'll make it a little bit cooler because it's behind it, even though in the photo, the color is almost exactly the same. And be real careful. I'm actually try to make it a little bit darker actually. Let's see if this will work. Yeah, okay. OK, 
Okay, try to be kind of careful and paint around it. Okay, again, I'm painting this very loose. I'm not, yeah. And I actually need to remind myself to do that. Otherwise, we're going to be here for too long. And I don't want to keep you guys for too long. And I don't intend to stay up too late as well. Okay, get some Carmine color in. Okay. So this is mostly flat looking. Okay. Just gonna have some clean water and just soften this side a little bit. Okay. Alright. Does this work? I actually don't know. I actually don't know if it's gonna work, but I do know that if I hesitate too much it's not going to work out well. The paint is going to dry and the wash is not going to be fresh anymore. I need to darken the center quite a bit. Lizard and crimson, some ultramarine blue, make some really dark pigments here, right here. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more dark here as well. If your pigment is dry, you can add them. Okay. And all right. Carmine, I'm going to give it a little bit of this little dots. Okay. Suggestion for the anther. Okay. Good morning. Good to see you. Okay, so let's just start to paint this one. I'm going to start to speed up as I paint out. So some of the flowers will be a little bit looser, a little bit looser and keep trying to try to keep them nice and fresh. Again, those shadows shape. Okay, here's some anther. Follows the form of the petal as much as you can. Okay. A little bit of blue here. I feel like don't want it to don't want it just to be all pink because okay. all right some more dark in the middle I'm actually gonna grab some this is Hansa yellow and uh, grab some orange as well I want some nice warm yellow and just put those anther in okay they're just a little dots here and there okay some of it can blend into the other shape but that's fine okay it's totally fine okay i'm not i'm not looking at the reference and try to find out where every single and their dot is I'm just find random spot to put them okay and I'm going to add a little bit of that here oh thank you for watching 
I actually haven't painted for quite a while and I haven't do live stream for quite a while, so I saw now is a good time to kind of come back to it. Okay, so we got our some of the flowers here. I might come back to another wash and define them a little bit more. But right here, I feel needs to be a little bit darker just so that this flower can get can be separated a little bit better so the purpose for this flower underneath is actually just to bring up these two flowers so don't be afraid to go a little bit to get a little bit darker for this one and a little bit looser as well okay important thing is to get that shape out make them pop out okay all right I'm gonna start to do this one same drill I'm just gonna I'm actually gonna pre-wet this a little bit so this is just some clean water. I'm just gonna grab some of the color here and just let it spread out like that. Okay. Some carmine so it's nice and red. Okay, let's define the anther a little bit. A couple ones here. This is more about just getting the feeling of the flower, the, the, the tone, the color, instead of really trying to make a, like a legit floral painting, which is something I'm not good at, and I don't have time for it as well. Okay, so, seem like the mic I'm using is a keeper, so I'm just gonna use this one. For my future live stream if it works out well then we'll just do that okay little dots for the end there there we go let's look at it as a whole okay there we go we got some flower going on pre-wet this area and the same thing I'm just gonna add some color to it nice carmine and Dots for the enter and Let's soften this a little bit. So we got some interesting hard and soft shape play off each other. Okay. Alright. Let me actually start to paint some branches in. So burn sienna, burn umber, I'm gonna add a little bit of cobalt blue to neutralize that so it's not too warm. And just 
be careful try not to touch that otherwise it's gonna just blend into each other which I don't want so know what shape you want to merge know what shape you want to separate so I'm not gonna touch this I can wait for it to dry but yeah I don't really want to to wait so and I don't want to blow it dry oops I touch it a little bit so it seep back in oh well just let it be okay and uh, I'm gonna wet this area first I'll soon show you why okay and again mix that i'm gonna add a little bit of warm okay so now just gonna paint that in like this remember the wet area i painted look at how soft those are okay if you pre-wet the surface and you come back and paint those you get those nice soft shape and that's what I'm intended to do with this so and this part is dry so we got some hard edge here got some soft edge here the hard edge here will be perfect to define the petal of the flower so I can do that like so slow down just a little bit and really define that petal flower petal shape out okay just take just a tiny little bit more time and define them the rest of it can be just soft like that okay. with that background shape leaf whatever this flower pops out okay so take a little bit of time slow down but at the same time don't slow down too much because it's gonna dry okay so while it is wet I can add some more soft detail in this so pretend this is a camera there's a bokeh and I am actually trying to create the same effect those blurry background here I think that works well here okay a little bit of orange here okay. are you guys doing very quiet here as always like I find my live stream is mostly very quiet <laughs> for whatever reason I think it's just because I'm there's some other watercolor channel people always saying something but well, we have five people here, so it's not a lot of people. Okay, I'm gonna spray a little bit of water on it. And uh, I'm going to squeeze out the moisture on my brush and uh, just going to. Get rid of the some paint so it has a little bit more texture. I think I'm gonna splash some 
water on it. Just to give it more texture, we don't need everything to be so fine. And a little bit of break up here. Okay. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> How's the whole thing look like? Okay, it's getting there. So I'm just gonna start to paint some more flowers here and try to wrap it up as soon as possible. Okay. Really don't intend this to be some sort of really fine painting, just a little bit of fun. Playing with the paint, studying some form. Pretend I'm outdoor and painting this. Konnichiwa. Actually, it's evening here. Anyways, so... Again, grab some carmine, drop that in while it is still wet. Get that interesting effect. Interesting wet on wet effect. stern and the branch and I'm gonna be sure to make them dark some enter here there we go okay some quick stroke here and let's just define this flower very very simple okay, a little bit cooler here and a little bit cooler down here. Okay. Must be blooming there in Japan. Like, must be a lot of cherry blossom there right now. Actually, we, we had it here, but I think most of them are turning, turning brown already. I sort of missed that window of opportunity to take more photo of it. Okay, let's work on this too. And then we will be done with the flower. Uh, it's getting a little bit tiring actually. Okay, the shadow down here. Okay, I'm gonna soften some of these. Okay, a little bit more carmine here. Karma in the center and actually make it a lot darker here. So now, with this being darker, it feels like this is on top of that and there's more depths within it. TY, you mean thank you? Oh, well, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. 
Okay. So somewhere yellow for the enter and just while we're at it, I'm just gonna add some more some leaves and stuff here and there in the background. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep this loose. Okay, so a little bit of soft shape here and uh, here is a thicker and darker stern branch. Okay, some water, drop in some paint. So some softness, some soft, some hard, um, just kind of play off each other. You know, the background can be just very, very abstract. Okay, this is kind of getting a little bit too flat. I'm just going to drop in a few paints here. Hopefully that will give it a little bit more form. Okay, so on to here. And uh, the last flower here. Oh, great. Let's paint together. That's fun. Okay. Okay, so a little drop here. A little drop here, a little drop there. Here, drop here. Have fun with it, okay? So some water, I'll soften some of the edges. Keep some hard, but keep some soft. Keep the bottom soft and uh, Pre wet the center and get that dark in here. And get that carmine around here and some water to just bring that tone out. There we go. little bit of blue and just want to make things just a little bit cooler okay some shadow for the anther I mean to a point I, you don't know which is the shadow which is the the, the real thing so it just kind of gets a little bit confusing so rather than trying to Differentiate them. I'm just gonna suggest them all. Okay, so this is a very dry mixture. I'm just gonna put it in the center. Since it's pretty dry, it's not gonna spread out too much. We got a nice dark center here. Okay. All right. We got some more flowers, but those are way in the background. So, so I'm just going to make them very, very loose. Okay, a little petals here and there. Hmm. 
I'm also using a slightly bigger brush just to kind of force myself not getting to too much detail. Okay. I'm painting a little bit tilted. Uh, yeah, probably 140 pound paper. I'm not sure. 300 grand. Uh, as on the block, this is Baohong, which is a Chinese brand watercolor paper. It's very good paper. Very cheap also. It's a lot cheaper than Archers and Saunders, which are also good paper with their own right. I use them all. Uh, I don't, I'm not preferring one over another. Whatever works. Okay. Sorry, I don't think I understand what you're saying, but hope there's something good. Okay, so we're done with the flower. So now the flower is almost like invisible because the background is very, very light. So we're going to try to get some dark background around them so that these flower will pop out. Okay, this is what I'm hoping for anyways. I'm hoping it'll work. If it doesn't work, then... Uh... <clears throat> if it doesn't work, then God help us. All right. Bao Hong, B-A-O. H O N G. You can probably find it in like AliExpress or something. Uh, but yeah, search around the internet. I'm pretty sure you can find it here and there. Okay, so I'm gonna mix a more of like a dark green color. See if I can nice and dark. I can paint over those turns without a problem. So, a couple areas. Let's Be careful not to let it dry, okay? You want a nice, clean, flat wash, especially for the background. You don't want to all of a sudden give it a lot of texture because it's going to compete with the flower. Okay, so just slow down, but also don't bog down too much. See, I'm just gonna soften this in the back here. Here we go. Okay. All right. Here as well. Try to define that. Petal shape a little bit. Clean water, and I'm just gonna soften this as well. 
Okay, you don't have to paint them all the way through. Okay, the main purpose for this background is for the flower to show up better. That's all. Okay. Here, okay. I'm gonna grab some blue color, some cerulean blue actually, just to changing things up a little bit. Look at that, okay. Nice and cool. There's some flower petals in the back, so I will just try to leave some random white. See, it's starting to pop right as soon as I get the background in. It's amazing. A little bit of. Let's actually make it a little bit hotter. There we go. Soften that edge. Okay. So as I work towards here, I will also paint around this flower, give it some more form. So, you know, painting like this requires some patience and, and faith. Okay. Because in the beginning, you're defining all this against a really light background and you saw you know everything doesn't doesn't really turn out the way you want it to be flowers not popping up and all that so it might be very tempted to try to do more on the flower but a lot of time that might not be your solution that might not be the issue the issue is the background is too light so Sometime you just paint, you know, get through the process, and when it's time to fill in the background, everything just sort of work together, and that's like the nicest thing ever to just see how watercolor just resolve itself for you. Okay. So some more darker tone here. Okay, so the pencil line I did gave me a really good guide for me to paint around them. How does it look? I hope you guys like it. I like it more and more as I paint this. I didn't like it before, but I'm just going to push it through and now I like it quite a bit. See how that flower just pops now that the background is in. How amazing that is. All it needs is just a little bit of contrast. And because I you know I trust the process right because I don't just see what's in front of me and try to focus on that and try to fix it okay this can be a little bit softer. Okay, a little bit of 
green back end. I mean, green and and pink sort of you know, usually doesn't go well together. But I think in this case is is doing fine. Okay. In watercolor, we trust. Okay, trust that's going to resolve and look at that. It does wonder. Grab a bigger brush and really get some big shape in here. Soften some of that. Okay, and just gonna fill this part with water, and I come back with some carmine again. gonna blow this dry and then I'll come back and start to give it some more punches in some of the area give it some hard darker shape and we should be good Okay, these are dry enough, so I'm gonna come back and add some more darker shape. You guys still with me, or you guys are falling asleep? I don't blame you if you do, I'm kinda tired too. Just, you know, give it some more punches here and there, especially in this branches. Those are pretty dark. And come to think of it, those are the things that's connecting all of the flowers together. So they are pretty important in contrast of the flower and petals. So that gives you a nice that gives you a nice direction to look at. So right now I'm using a lot drier pigment. So you're gonna start to see some dry brushing and those will be very very helpful to bring out the contrast the texture of the flowers so light and dark soft and hard all this comes into play when you're doing your painting okay here okay some dark branches 
Now the flower pops. Okay. So now I think we can sort of see if we can define it just a little bit more. So give it just a little bit darker tone to it and uh, start to give it another go. some parts just a little bit darker okay places where the petal overlaps I'm just gonna give it a little bit of shadow underneath okay this may or may not be in the photo but I paint what I understand and a little bit of suggestion goes a long way. Okay, so same thing here in this petal. Okay, that line here is start to give it more form and suggestion for this flower. And another layer here and again we'll soften the edge with a damp brush okay quite enjoying this like you know sometimes it's kind of nice to slow down painting smaller things most of my painting scenery are like large-scale scenery with big buildings, skyscraper, and cars, and things like that. And those are nice, but sometimes good to kind of change things up a little bit. This is why I like to do portrait as well, because you get to kind of slow down, really look at the subject, and try to just have fun and give it as much not crazy amount of details but you get to slow down and really look at the things smaller things in a different way so it's not everything is about huge big picture epic sceneries it's a lot of atmosphere and stuff this is something a little bit small i mean those flowers are tiny if you actually look at cherry blossom in real life they are not big they are tiny so in a way painting them kind of makes you appreciate all the little nuances you know, that nature has to provide that god creates that the nature is giving us because those details are really really small but And painting is a really nice way to sort of study them, appreciate them, and celebrate them. Okay. Okay, I think this is pretty good. I think it's almost at the end of it. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I can, I can continue on forever, but I think we are reaching the end of our live stream here. It's already over an hour. Let me see if, any, if there's anything else I can do. Okay, this feels a little bit unresolved and flat. So even though it's the background, 
I think we still need to try to just define it a little bit, so... Just give it a little bit of layer. Okay. Warm it up a little bit with the carmine. Oh, thank you for watching. So nice that when I'm painting, I got companies and... and people are enjoying them as well. Okay. okay. Now, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna do... Give it some gouache. I think some white gouache can get some of the highlight back. Especially, I paint over a lot of the anther. So, let's see if I can get some of those white back. Like again, I'm, I could I could have just used masking fluid, but then you know I don't want to make this too complicated, so I'll just paint over them and a little bit of white over here. Okay, just squash straight out of the tube. Okay, I try not to mix with water. If you have to, just a little bit, otherwise it will you'll dilute them a little bit too much. They won't be as opaque. Because in this case, you want them to be nice and opaque. Okay. Add a little bit of the highlight back on the flower itself. That's pretty much it. There's there, there's not a lot actually, and you don't want to you don't want to do it too much anyways. Because if you do too much wash, it's just gonna be kind of weird to me. Hey okay, Danilo, hope you're doing well. Okay. Let me look at this again. Alright, so I think we can darken the background a little bit more. So I'm gonna glaze it over again, but this time I'm not gonna play with the color too much. I'm just gonna mix a sort of good, sort of like a blue color here and yeah let's just do that Not dark enough, a little bit too much water. Okay.
yeah so that again that helps the flower to pop out just a little bit more I mean I'm not being particularly careful about them because you know I kind of want to remain this just as a sketch so I didn't really you know I'm not picking up a tiny brush and try to outline all the shape and stuff I think that the point is really just to to get a nice I'm just gonna paint over those flowers because they're in the shadow anyways yeah I'm just really just trying to darken the background just a tad more so the flower and the light come out a little bit better because those cherry blossom in the sun bring out those really nice and beautiful white and that's what you know I want to do here so that's the whole point of this glazing right so I'm not going to take a small brush and dab my way through too much okay, try to keep it fresh I mean I mean I should have make it I'm sh I should have made my first go on the background darker like this but you know doesn't always happen like my mixture wasn't always as intense as I wanted to be so sometime you gotta do it again but as long as you do it cleanly you should be fine okay that's what glazing is about. Here am I using a giant brush trying to paint around the flower petals and stuff and but I think that's a good thing about this is that you know because I'm painting a negative shape so the shape come out maybe a little bit more interesting than if I'm painting it too refined Chrissy and Danilo two of my best students and what I'm really happy to see is that they you know they become friend outside the course which is I think is great I love how that turns out and if you're interested in my course I'm actually updating it right now um, there's several lessons I feel that you can use some update so it's not that I'm not doing courses anymore it's just that I really want to update it and make it as best as I can so if you want to get the course Hopefully we can be a little bit more patient and wait for it. Um, I promise you it's worth the wait. I mean, people who took the course are already really happy about it, but I want to make it even better because I learned so much from my students, what they need, um, some, of the, some of the lessons can be improved to help them more. So that's something that I want to to bring it to to my students so anyways I think this is it okay I think darker background definitely bring out the light of this flower a lot better okay think this is I think this is good to go okay just some more drop of karma here and there I think this I think this is fine yeah it's a fun little painting I hope you guys enjoyed that I'm gonna wait for you to dry and take it out and, uh, 
Oh, thank you, Chrissy. But you like all of my paintings, so it's not really fair. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Thank you for liking it, though. I'm just gonna give this one a little branch too. Oh, I want to show you guys this. Um, give me a little. Give me a. Give me a moment. Okay, so my student just sent me this. Actually, I should. Sorry, right, let me take it down just a little bit since it's drying. I don't want to touch it. My student Miyuki sent me this from Japan. This is by, I keep forgetting her name. Yeah, Yuko Nagayama. Some beautiful painting by her. I just want to share it with you guys because I got this today. I was so exciting. Um, yeah, and this is probably why it inspired me to paint flowers. But her work is a lot more refined, of course. They're they're probably bigger in real life. But these are some very very beautiful painting, and the print quality is really amazing. So I just want to share it with you guys. But actually, if you look at them very closely, they are not that refined as well. I mean, some of them just kind of like color splashing. And it's really nice. Oh, look at that color. I love the blue. And uh, yeah, but see, like it's, it's all about the visual language. These are very graphic, actually. And those look at those glasses some of the highlight and stuff okay and again very nice grape and soft very very beautiful those are very nicely printed i can probably take it down and frame them very very pretty i'm not a flower person okay i'm you know i don't paint flower much but I don't paint flower much, but once in a while it's very very fun. Probably yeah, probably why I do flower today. So I haven't do it for a while, so might as well. So here it is without distortion. Hope you guys enjoy that. If you're new here, please subscribe and comment down below. Share this video if you want to and like this video if you want to. Alright. I think I hold you guys long enough. I will see you guys next time. Bye.